Alright Josh, over here. <laughs> Sounds like it came from that way. <laughs> Do you see any reason why we cannot uh, weld that all together, including the inside and the outside, and make this permanent? Um, no. We won't figure it out until we weld it, and then we'll be like, ah, oh, crap, we should have done that first. But if you think it's good, I'm gonna start welding there, there, and up inside there. I think it's good. Right now I'm just gonna weld the tops here because we need to pull that bumper off like we said. So I'll just leave these two unwelded. Uh, I should probably make sure we can put the taillights in. I guess. You got them out like that, a, right? As long as that's unwelded, no, I got them out when the... Oh, let's check. Let's check and see if they'll go in. As long as those aren't welded, then well, they're, kind of on they're welded bit. at the top. You just painted oh, right over your stickers. Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. That way I know right where to put the new ones. Looks like it'll go just fine. Okay. Alright guys, it's been a long weekend. We're gonna get back to Project Bumble. Actually, this weekend we were hanging out with the guys from Summit. You should go check out that video on their YouTube channel, Summit Racing. But otherwise, check out what we've got going on in here. So we left off. We needed to paint this, we needed to do some things. So, Josh, what did you put on here? I did a... Colt roll-on paint job, bedliner paint job. A bedliner paint job on there. We've got the uh, roll cage hung and painted. Right now what we need to do though is get this thing lined back up. We have exactly two days before this thing has to be in the Jeep show at Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion. Hey, it's Hope, say hi. <laughs> but it doesn't even have drive shafts or a transfer case, seats, or any of the requirements for Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion. Uh, oh yeah, and you have to drive it there. Well, you don't have to, but we are. So, what are you doing? <laughs> if you wait two seconds, I'll be done with this and can help you. But we're gonna lower this down, weld it in place, try to get all this fixed up. So, let's see if we can get it done in time. All right, we got that cage on there. We do need to pull everything down, but we did some smart moves before we pulled everything off, and that is making these little arrows where they align with each other. Did you do that? I did that. 
All right, good move, good job. So we'll know when we pull that down where exactly it needs to be. When you weld something like this off of the Jeep, it's gonna move a little bit. Luckily, it looks like everything is falling into place, but we'll have to pull this down, weld that, and then we'll have to come up front and kind of probably put a strap on it. So we'll put a strap over here and maybe attach it there and suck this down. You can see there's a gap right now, but with some, with some weight on there, it should pull down into place. And hopefully we can line up all these arrows so that we know it's exactly where we wanted it to be. And if you don't remember from the last video, the reason that we pulled that off was to get all the welds underneath here because this thing is so close to the body that I couldn't get a welder up underneath between the body and the cage. After we get all this figured out, we're also going to take you guys along to Smoky Mountain with us, so stay tuned. Oh. And I'm using a new camera, so let me know what you think about this. I'm, I've got the same one that uh, Colt got, which is the DJI, which I just, we got so fed up with the GoPros having issues. So let's see how this thing works out for us. It's got drone mode, check this out. You got the arrows lined up? Those ones are lined up. So this bumper still has to come off um, to get painted on the interior. So we're going to not weld these bottom ones just yet. But otherwise, we can weld this. And then uh, these inside pieces need to get welded to the interior cage. There's four different spots where it comes through the roof right there. You guys thought these cages was overkill. and. An inside cage and an exo cage. What say you? <laughs> the exo cage mounts off the interior cage. It's not a full, all encompassing exo cage. That's why we have an interior and an exo. The interior is more for safety, the exo is to protect the Jeep. Yeah, so when you do an exo cage, it's just for the body of the Jeep mostly. It's not really going to be that great if you were in a, a real collision. Interior cage is great for protecting the people. This is kind of a combination of both, but also the exo cage doesn't have a, a B pillar or a C pillar. All that's internal. So where the internal cage is lacking, we went to exo. Where the exo cage is lacking, we went to internal. So I think it's the best of both worlds. There's a couple tubes we probably didn't need, but it's only a couple pounds more. And it's gonna look awesome. What do you guys think? Does it look good? We're gonna get to see it put all together here shortly. Look at that. You got the fenders ready to go in? Oh yeah, they're all ready. So I don't think you guys have seen that yet, but Josh cut the factory fenders and we're gonna weld those in place there. Um, that may or may not get done by Jeep Invasion. It's not gonna be an easy weld in. We'll have to tack it in. We can tack it in. Be see, because see it you can't take it to Jeep Invasion like that. <laughs> Good. It would have been a lot easier to paint white before we put the cage back on. Here you go. There's the fence. Oh, here's a sneak peek. Sneak peek. Look at that. And then you're going to have to paint that again. Yes. All right. Let's stop talking and get started working. We got carried away in a hurry and forgot to do the most important step here. Alright guys, it's a new day. 
Tomorrow we have to be on the trailer for Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion. This thing looks like it's almost finished, but if you look a little deeper, it's not quite there. We need fenders. More important than that, we need some seats to be able to sit in. That'd probably be good. There's no gas tank back here. That would probably be helpful. And there's no transfer case or drive shafts and the exhaust is hanging down. So we have how many hours to get that fixed? <laughs> About seven. We gotta pull the bumper yet. Josh got up early this morning and was out here working on paint and this place, if you had smell of vision It stinks. It stinks right now. It is really, really bad. I think we're probably both getting high in here just from the the paint fumes. Anything else I missed? Got to change the U-joint on the front drive shafts. We just need to get it there. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it needs to run and drive. You got a little overspray here. Oh yeah, that's all right. It's gonna be in the box. <laughs> so this little box right here somehow fits perfectly right over the top of the fuel cell. So that thing is gonna be like a well, I'm gonna call it the bomb, thebomb.com, but actually, I don't know. You got a, you got a gas tank inside of a box, which uh, I guess is good, I guess is bad. I don't know. Yeah, it'll hold fumes. To me, it sounds like a bomb. Have, to vent it <laughs> have you ever seen a boat? They have an exhaust fan in the engine bay, or whatever you call that thing, uh, on purpose, for a reason. Do I need an exhaust fan? Yeah. <laughs> every t every time before you start it, you have to turn that exhaust fan on, <laughs> clear the fumes out before you start it. So last night I got all the welds finished up for the cage, or most of them. You can see, I think it looks pretty good. You guys let me know. But um, what I've found over the years is that when you're welding, your welds tend to look better when you're comfortable. So all these welds out here, I'm comfortable because... Uh, you know, I've got nothing in the way. I'm going around something that's fairly easy to get to. I'm standing up or kneeling. The ones that don't look so great are always the ones where you're uncomfortable. So you're, you're upside down, your head's cocked at an angle, your arms are twisted, aka stuff like this up inside when you're going around weird things like this and, and, uh, your seating situation is not so ideal. So, if I have one tip for you but when you're welding is to get comfortable. Be comfortable, be comfortable in the clothes that you're wearing, make sure your helmet's comfortable, your lens is clear, and that your seating arrangement or your standing arrangement is comfortable. I need to weld these on next, but before we do that, we're gonna take this bumper off and we've got some paint that we're gonna put on the inside because there's no paint on the inside or outside of this bumper yet. We're also gonna paint the sliders and to do that, we're gonna use our fancy duplicolor rack over here. So we've got lots of choices over here. Josh, what did you say? We're gonna use um, some... Rust, rust barrier, okay. Rust barrier for the inside of the, of the bumper. Which one? This one? That one. And that stuff's nice. You know it's gonna scratch no matter what you put on it. And that stuff's nice when it when it scratches and scrapes, you just spray it back on, cover it up. Alright. I think this one, the farm implement would be good for the rock sliders. Is there any spots that we're not supposed to paint? Is that what you're taping up now? Yeah. Paint everything. Everything except for the front and the tubes. Well, you paint these tubes. <laughs>
All right guys, I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit. That stuff is the thickest stuff I've ever put on. That's not meant to be a top coat, so um, I wouldn't recommend it for any kind of exterior, but it is meant to be a, um, like a rust barrier and it's got a rubberized coating, so it's really thick, like almost like you're painting on rubber. So that's gonna be great for corrosion and rust protection. Which is good because this is the underside of a bumper, the backside of a bumper, and if you know anything about jeeping, you know that those rear tires throw all kinds of mud and water and stuff into the back of that bumper. So that's gonna be good for that. We're gonna let that dry, and in the meantime, what are you doing? You hugging the door? You getting ready to keep this from getting hot. Okay. Yeah, well, I think we need that. I'm feeling a little loopy. In the meantime, we're going to be installing this transfer case while this duplicolor is drying. Somebody just snuck in here. It's y'all's favorite time of the day. What you got for us today? It's the lunch lady. <laughs> oh, yay! That's how I want to be now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got chicken fried steak, fries, corn, and a smile. There you go. That's my favorite part is the smile. Hi guys. Mm. <laughs> Why do you have something different? Because I'm not trying to get heartburn. What's that? Corn? That's corn. With of course a little plate or bowl because you have to have it in a bowl so it stays warm according to Matt and one of his eccentricities with having to eat the food like this. Eccentricities, is that a word? I don't know, it's my word, and everybody knows what I mean by that. You're weird. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is a word. Well, there you go. Why are you giving me a hard time? Good job on the big words, babe. <laughs> yes. If you guys remember from that uh, what went wrong with the WJ video, we talked about how these things ended up bending for the anti-rock sway bar. So to fix that, we've made some little triangles that are going to go right here and get welded into place and just act as a little gusset for that to keep that from bending, one on each side. If you watch that what went wrong video, we didn't mention this because we did not see it yet, but there is a crack right here. We've ground that out and we're gonna weld all this back together. There's a crack there and a crack here where that truss was welded to the cast. I think eventually what we're gonna do is come up with the truss over the top and connect the two sides together to make that a lot stronger because the way this truss works right now is it just welds onto the cast on either side. That's great and all, but you're too rough on stuff. Mm. <laughs> so we're probably gonna chop this off. Also at the same time, we'll, remove, we'll make this upper control arm higher and that's gonna lessen the load on this thing because right now the spacing between the upper control arm and the lower control arm is not high enough. It needs to be eight inches or more and yours is at what, like six or something? It's vertical spacing, it's at six like six but total spacing it's at nine so you can be behind and in front too and that matters it's not just vertical you can be like this and and that counts as spacing too but vertical spacing is not it, it could be a little higher yeah sure. i think i think if we got this up higher but we're gonna have to be careful that we don't hit anything up in there but for now we're just gonna weld it back together because tomorrow is the day we don't have much time
in the bleeping Jeep shop, everything is a hammer. My favorite though is the crescent hammer. So that was the rear drive shaft. This is the front. Holy moly, Josh, what did you do to this thing? I don't know what happened there. Wish I knew. You abused the heck out of that thing. That is loosey goosey. So that's the double carden on the front drive shaft. We need to get those two joints replaced. The clock is ticking down. It's a freckle past a hair. <laughs> Now you can't new find 1310 on it. I have a ton of 1310s. There's one right there. That's the one I'm looking for. It says <laughs> new 1310 on it. There you go. Is that a drive shaft 1310? Uh, I think so. It came in the Comanche. We had the yoke rebuild on it. You got to do that again. Look at this, guys. <laughs> have you ever seen? A cap that loose where you could just push it out by hand? That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah, I hope it hasn't wobbled out the, the drive shaft. Alright, we're gonna get that replaced and I'll figure out something else to work on while he's doing that. Look at this thing, it's pretty. Alright, so moving back over here to where I welded that. It's cooled off now. We're going to touch that up so it doesn't rust. Here in uh, Tennessee, things rust very quickly. So we're going to use some of this Duplicolor acrylic enamel. That's going to be harder than a regular paint, and we'll do a good job of keeping that nice and black. There we go. We'll do the same thing back here. These little guys that I put on with the uh, enamel. And then Bob's your uncle. I never have a, understood that though. Why is Bob your uncle? Uh, maybe some British guys out there can explain that to me. Get the double cardigan all fixed up. It's all done up. Cardigan sweater, as a lot of people like to call it. You ready for this? Oh. This thing doesn't roll very well. Alright, bumper is on. Now I have to weld these things to here. Once I do that, this bumper is permanent, or at least permanent as in you would have to cut tubes to get this thing off. So I'll start welding that. If you want to um, prep this for welding, we'll finalize that. This material right here is, I think, galvanized or stainless or something. It doesn't want to weld very well, but I'll just have to weld it hotter, I think. The day is winding down, and <laughs> we still have a lot yet to do. This is dry though, this is kind of cool. It's like a rubber texture, so spray on rubber. But we're gonna lay this over, put it back on, and then we have to weld these tubes to it. Let that cool while we're doing that. We'll put the gas tank in. Then we're gonna put some Duplicolor truck bed liner on the outside of that, probably tonight, so that we can let that dry and not be getting all over it. We're also gonna paint these, let this dry overnight. Is there anything else we need to do tonight before we call it a day? We ought to do something here. Should we put these on? Just temporarily tack in three spots? One, two, three? I don't think we can do just three <laughs> spots. I don't know if we want to get into that. We'll be all night. 
No. Just put one or two in there. There is only two. <laughs> one or two tacks in there will be good. We can try it. Then we have to paint them. You can't take it to the show like that. <laughs> what do you guys think? Should we take it to the show like that? I think even if we just tacked it in there and didn't paint it, it's still white. Oh, we need some seats yet. Yeah, that's probably going to be helpful. And there's these wires all over the place. Where did all those wires go? Above the headliner. Yeah, but where were they when we were in Moab? Above the headliner. Oh, the, he the headliner was out? Or still in there when we were in Moab? Yeah. Holy cow. We just took the headliner out. Just shove it back up under there like... Rudy, Rudy had a good idea, which was just some foam board covered with, with material, and then he just shoved it up over the bars. Alright, there's that. Now we gotta clean that up a little bit. Get some paint on it. And get the gas tank in without burning ourselves on these fresh welds. Alright, this says uh, clean and use a stiff brush or pressure washer. Did you do that? Yes. Okay, uh, it says mask all hardware. Did you do that? Yes. <laughs> it says use a scouring pad or 180 grit sandpaper to scuff. Did you do that? Yes. <laughs> uh, wipe down with wax and grease remover. Did you do that? Yes. Did you um, shake can vigorously for one minute? Of course. All right, 12 to 15 inches from the surface, three to four light coats, 20 minutes between coats, and uh, yeah. So we're gonna be here a little while. Or we could just go one thick coat. One thick coat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, since this is sponsored by Duplicolor, we're gonna tell you to follow all those instructions. Do what we say, not what we do. Since Josh is the master, I'm gonna let him spray this. He's the master of paint, and uh, I'm just gonna shake it up for him. I'll be your assistant, <laughs> right. your shaker. Okay. So this is Duplicolor Bed Armor, Do-It-Yourself Truck Bed Liner. Water-based, rubberized finish, flexible, excellent for cutting in and touch-ups. All right, let's see how she does. Are you just gonna go, just gonna go crazy there? What do you mean go crazy? You got, you got no masking tape. Painting it all. All right. Remember how it said three to four light coats. Eighteen light coats. I have a feeling we're gonna have to open a window here in a minute. That pizza getting to you already? <laughs> Not the pizza. But yes, maybe the pizza. <laughs> still going to be wet when we're at the show tomorrow. That'll be a fun prank for people. <laughs> to check out the bumper. Yeah. Go look at that back bumper. Okay, so that part's going to be black rubberized truck bed liner. This part's going to be silver to match with the rest of the roll cage. We still have some painting to do. Uh, we still have the sliders. I'm going to get to installing the seat belts. Am I going to blow you up back there if I turn on the power? Uh, no, because I don't have it plugged in. Alright, we're working into the night, guys. We are on to seat belts. A little more paint here and there, but... Uh, Got the gas tank in. There's still a lot left to do. It's not gonna be quite done for our thing we've got going on tomorrow, but I don't know. We'll be there anyway. All right, so when you're installing seat belts, make sure to sit in the seat. Whoever's gonna be sitting there the most, get comfortable. And then these guys, you can 
just go right around the tube, which is what we're going to do, or it comes with a little thing where you can weld onto the tube and have a bolt-in thing. But I like just the simple method of putting it around the tube. So what you want to do is have this right about where your shoulder is going to be. So right about there is going to be about good. Have somebody sit in there. We already had Josh sit on the other side, and that seemed to be prime spot. So this strap is going to go over, it's going to go back through here. here at that point go ahead and adjust it to the correct length I think that's going to be pretty good right there now we're going to go to lock it in we're just going to go back through here and I would recommend not cutting this for a while make sure it's going to work out good and then you can cut it give some extra length though in case you ever have somebody that uh, doesn't quite fit in that arrangement. You've got some extra room to deal with there. Now I'm just gonna put that in the back pocket here and we'll do the others. All right, if you've never used a harness before, let me show you how these work. So you've got a buckle here. This side is gonna slide in as this is open and then lock down. Now that's just the lap belt. To do the four points, you're going to bring this over your shoulder, bring this other one over your shoulder. Now the important thing is you want your lap belt to be super tight because when you tighten these, it's going to try to pull up on that. What you don't want is your seat belt to be way up here. So you're going to clasp that and then you're going to tighten this down on both sides. You want that to be fairly even in the middle. So we're going to start with right about there. So now we're going to take this part here, put it in. We're going to take the other side. That's too tight. So to loosen this up, what you do is you pull up as you apply pressure. There's a little loop right there. You just pull that up while pulling down here, and that will let it loose. So this one goes in here, this one goes in here, and then that buckles. Now the first thing you want to do, don't pull these, you want to pull your lap belt tight. Right side, left side, get that as tight as you can get. And then we're just going to pull on the main straps. Now we're not going anywhere. To loosen, like I said, pull this up, apply pressure, pull this up, apply pressure. You can do the same here. These have the loops on the bottom as well. Pull that, apply pressure, and you can that's if you want to loosen it. Of course, it's always, what was I going to say? If you have it really tight, you're not going to be able to get back in. So I'd recommend loosening it up just a little bit every time you get out. Because if you've got it really cinched down like this, super tight, you can still get out of it just by pulling here and you're free. But then you're never going to be able to put that back on because everything is just too tight for you to get that clasp done. So if you loosen it a little bit before you jump out, it's going to be a lot easier to get back in. Look at this, we found another one. Duplicolor Premium Truck Bed Coating. High output. So you've been using this one a little, what's the difference in that one? It's less output. <laughs> less output? It's less output, but you have a real good control and real good definition so you, you don't have to tape off or worry about overspray as much. It lays down a little bit better, I think you get more of a textured coating. And, and it's got a little it's got a little trigger right there. It's got a trigger. So Josh approved. You like this I one like better? I like this one better. Yes. All right. If you're going with one or the other, Josh likes that one better. Here's a handy little tip. I know they make these things at the hardware store. But if you don't have one, you can just take a piece of, uh, this is quarter inch, I guess you could do eighth inch as well, and just bend it in some sort of shape that looks like a mixer, and then just go on your mixy way. Stick it in the drill, look at that. What'd you say? I said those things are $15 at the paint store. <laughs> I just told him he's gotta project when he talks. $15! <laughs> Very good, good job. <laughs> Here's another little money saving tip for you. These brushes right here, I get these at the Dollar Tree. They're a dollar. <laughs> 
The same brushes at Home Depot are probably $8 a piece. They're not the greatest, but if you're just painting bumpers and sliders and whatever, I use these for everything, but a dollar. Actually, if you guys don't know, the Dollar Tree is now the dollar twenty-five tree. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is nice and smooth. Levels out pretty good. All right, look at that. We're gonna call it a night. It's late, but tomorrow we're gonna try to get these fenders on. You see that? That is the stock fender, and it's just been cut to fit inside that tube. But that needs to get tacked in and painted like this, and then that paint is still gonna be wet. <laughs> on the way there to Smoky Mountain, which is in Pigeon Forge. But uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the morning. Oh, I smacked myself in the head yesterday, and now I have to go to the show with a giant knot on my head. Josh is the sheet metal guy. I let him do the sheet metal, I'll do the thick stuff. <laughs> I hate sheet metal, it's terrible. Let's inspect your work. So strong. So strong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's a new day. We're doing stuff. We have exactly, not two, one and a half hours. Or we have to leave. You're gonna be ready? Sure. You know what's kind of funny is uh, the paint that we put on last night on the rocker rails is still wet. Like really, really wet. So that stuff, heavy duty, takes a long time to dry. Let's see here. This stuff is good and dry. It's got a nice texture to it. I like that. Is this one dry? That's dry. Yeah, but this... Yeah. We're gonna have to tell people do not touch the rock rails. So right now we're working on Putting these on, and that has to get paint. Anything else before we can drive this? Tail lights, All transmission right, fluid. All right, that's probably important as well. All right, let's get to it. <laughs> Show them what happened. Put my seat on anymore. Because it won't flip forward. <laughs> I have to cut a big slit. Each seat. <laughs> <laughs> the seat has to flip forward to get to the welder under there. So I told him, just set it there and then you can just lift it out like that. <laughs> Your gas tank's a little hard to get to now. How much gas do you need to get to Weigel's? Oh, a monster. Godzilla put that on there. You know things don't have to be so tight, right? At least one. my little pencil. It's gonna be uncomfortable as heck to sit in. <laughs> We're about to find out. <laughs> oh man. That's not too bad actually. Unless you hit the brakes really hard and then you just get jammed into there. <laughs> All right, we are getting her dialed in. Josh is actually. I've been grabbing our stuff for the show. We have to go set up. They want us to set up actually yesterday and we're, we're a little late. So I have to set up our booth. We're gonna be selling t-shirts and swag and gear and meeting and greeting and everybody at the invasion. I'm gonna leave this camera with Josh as he is gonna be an hour or so behind. If you have any issues, or actually even if you don't have any issues, show people the way. All right. Okay guys, she's up and running. Um, all the vitals look good. All the lights that are on are supposed to be on, and there's none that aren't supposed to be on, but that doesn't leave many. Uh, I got it to go in two-wheel drive, so the shifters are working, so I think it's time to give it a shot. Nothing like an hour and a half road trip. Here we go. I know it may handle a little different. 
we never adjusted the coilovers, we didn't have a chance, so those, uh, they're probably going to settle and it's probably going to ride a little low, but it shouldn't be on the bump stops or at the end of the shock travel. So I'll just get, uh, it'll be more aerodynamic, I'll get better gas mileage. We'll see if anything happens, I'll click back on if anything happens. So sit rep. Uh, I've been on the road for about an hour. I have about 20 minutes left. Jeep's working good. Uh, everything's working. It's driving nice. I mean, it's full hydro steering, so it gets a little twitchy. I guess my biggest issue is the air conditioner worked at the shop. It's not working out here on the road, and it's really, really hot today, so I'm kind of dying in here. Um, turn the air conditioner on, and it blows hot like the heater, so... I think the blend door must be stuck. Something's going on with that. I don't know. Check all the controls. I'll check the blend door, see if it's moving. Because I definitely want AC in here. Other than that, progress is pretty good. I was going, running 70 down the down the highway back there for a little while that I was on it. So, happy so far. So guys, I made it. Bumble made it. Did good the whole way here. Uh, we're here at the kickoff party. Ron, Red Scorpion, you guys remember him. He built the axles in here. I noticed on the way here, I was getting a lot of Jeep waves from Wranglers. And I gotta say, if my Jeep wasn't good enough to get up waves all the time when it's on 33s, I'm not waving back now, so give it up. I'll just wave the Broncos. All right, well, we made it. I made it, Josh made it, we made it. We're at the Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion. This is just the pre-party though. It doesn't really start till tomorrow. So we're going to uh, hang tight, do some cool stuff tonight, and we'll see you guys at the real deal in the morning. They got a line out the door already. That's crazy. Alright, good morning. Good We've morning, got... <laughs> we, <laughs> we just started here. We've got the uh, booth set up, the WJ set up, just starting. It's 9 o'clock. They're opening the gates, letting people in. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun day. It's going to be hot. It's going to be like almost 100 degrees out here, 100% humidity. It's going to be a little toasty. Good morning, YouTube. Look at what Pull Apart did for us. So Pull Apart got us this nice step and repeat banner, I think is what they called it. Why do they call it step and repeat? I think it's because the logos are stepped and repeated, but they said it's step, take picture, repeat. <laughs> Look, it's Tony from Genray. I spy you. He's not paying attention. What am I videoing? There's some sort of white snow flying around. I don't know what it is, but we just got a huge wind gust. We about flew away. It's been 100 degrees out here and then all of a sudden this cloud popped up out of nowhere and decides it's going to blow us off the side of the hill here. Hang on tight! You got it? I got him! <laughs> all that white flake is probably from the porta potty flying around. I don't say that. Except it's probably asbestos from that you know, building up there. Maybe. Don't say that. I'm joking. My <laughs> Check this out guys. You recognize that? That is the Comanche right there as a bottle opener. Thank you so much. I appreciate You're very welcome. that. Yeah, yeah. Who, who are you guys? Oh, we're just a couple fans. Fans? Okay. Fans. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well, I, I appreciate that. That is cool. Yeah. There you go. I'll tell you a secret about Matt. He absolutely loves angry girls. He just goes nuts for an angry girl. Angry girls? Yeah, yeah I'm angry married girls. to one. <laughs> he wants me to duck this pink one with the blue duck. I don't know, I'm kind of embarrassed. I don't think I've ever ducked anybody before. You're about to. You're about to. <laughs> All right, here we go. Duck <laughs> <laughs> 
virgin? <laughs> Alright guys, it is nighttime out here at the Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion and things are crazy here. If you've never been to the south, there's this weird phenomenon of collecting ducks. So we've been out here. Last night we were sitting on the side like these people here. It's almost like a mix between a parade and trick-or-treating except instead of candy, instead of throwing candy or collecting candy, you're throwing and collecting ducks. Do they do that out west in California? Do you know? I have no idea. I think it might be just a southern thing. But anyway, we're going to go four-wheeling tomorrow, so we will see you in just a minute. And just like that, we're back, except now it's a day later. We've got the Bumble out here at Windrock Off-Road Park. We're going to put this thing to the test because we know it works, but we've added a lot of weight now. What's your guesstimate? Uh, 350. 350 pounds. Yeah. That's like Nowhere near the 1,000 pounds you guys think it is. <laughs> Some people said 1,000 pounds, but no, it's like having a, another person or two in the back or maybe strapped to the top. But uh, we're doing something different than we've ever done. We're gonna drop down the beginning or the end of Trail 21. We've got some other Jeeps with us. It's gonna be a fun time. Oh, it's a little tight. We've, we've got a TJ. We've got another TJ. We have, is that another TJ? But it's actually a wide open designs chassis. And then we have a JK with us. So uh, we'll see how everybody does today. And they're calling for thunderstorms half the day. So. Yeah. Last time I was on this trail, we had a great thunderstorm. But the weathermen out here, they don't know. They have no idea. Why do I hear a lot of popping and crackling? Cherokee noises. What do you think the chances are today, guys, that uh, Josh is going to put another dent in this thing despite having all this armor? I think it's a pretty good chance we're going to do it right now. <laughs> you know you could have straddled that rock, right? I guess I probably could have. Somebody dumped their toilet paper out there. Yep, there's the rock. That was a better line. That was a much better line. He almost took his door out on that rock right there. Oh, he's gonna try to go around. Let's see. Oh man. So apparently it rained yesterday because it is muddy as heck down in here. So here is where I was kind of stuck. There's where I was on my side whenever I was wheeling with Luna in that uh, video a few weeks ago, it started pouring down rain on Trail 21. There's a big old log there. Oh! Right into your door. Hold on. Don't go anywhere. I don't know how we're gonna deal with that. It's just gonna get worse. Go, go backwards. There you go, keep going. We're gonna try to winch this sucker out of here a little ways to keep people from smashing their door. If we got everybody together, we might could just heave ho it. Yeah. You got your door a little bit, but it's not as bad as I thought. Is it even dent? I don't think so. That's it. But it was really in there for a minute. Maybe that liner stuff is good. Put it all together. <laughs> Okay, so the trick is going to be to pull it out a little bit, but not too much, because then it'll be in that in that side. It's got to get all its pieces and parts. Oh, freedom winch line, freedom winch line. Just saying. Do what? Freedom winch line. That's it. That's good. Perfect, right there. 
All right, Josh, you gotta go down there and then hard right up. It's gonna be tough, it's slick. Well, you do have boots on. Yeah, but they're slick. I never wear anything but my loafers until today. <laughs> I, figured, I figured if any day I'm gonna need them today. He's gonna go downhill, try to turn around in there somewhere and come back up. It's gonna be harder than it looks, though. You guys just need rear steer. What's going yeah, on? Come on. Yeah, got, you brought the wrong vehicle. <laughs> All right, he's getting turned around here. That's some East Tennessee wheeling right there. Oh God. See if you can come up through right here. Okay, keep turning, you got one side up. Yeah, yeah, go, go, go! There's a rock there. comes the rain, we haven't even got Josh through here yet. <laughs> Yay! Now keep going. Hard left. Hard left. Give her a go. If she goes though, don't you gotta stop before you backflip up there. There it is. There. Hey, cool. All right. Hey. All right. Adjust y'all's lines accordingly. <laughs> if you even want to do it. You dried it up pretty good. All right. Let's see uh, if Tim's gonna give her a go. The good news is you're not down in there yet. If you don't want to go down in there. That's very true. Uh oh. It's about to get wetter. Right there at the end. That was good. Now if he doesn't make it, we'll have a place to camp out down here for the night. Oh. Alright, I guess he's taking the turnaround route down at the bottom here. So his hydro assist the clamp is loose. You can see it just moving back and forth there. Are you doing your own rock stacking now? Ready to winch it? Okay, it's winchy winch time. Oh man. Come 
you got the buggy for it. This is a wide open designs buggy built specifically for this. So if you can't do it, it's not the Jeep's fault. See if anybody else will try it. JK's going up the easy line. Don't fall off of there. said the welder only works whenever the Jeep is running. Well now we might need some saving. Okay, we got the battery connected. This thing working. We think we found the issue. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. That's weird. It needs to be cleaned, I guess. It needs to be tight. Let's see how sketchy we can make this. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. You squint. Hey, make sure you squint when you do that for safety glasses. Safety glasses. <laughs> I feel like you almost you, like see it's moving on you. So if I would just here, hold still. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> you 
Got it? Got yeah, it. maybe your arms are getting light. <laughs> there. There. Doesn't that, isn't that nice? You got a little mud in your ear. Huh? Hopefully it holds because he's coming on the next obstacle with us, which is going to be, I guess, little mule. We'll go find hit little mule. This fix here isn't going to work. Oh, we didn't weld that. No, he's trying to ratchet strap it. Oh, we should have welded that while we had the welder on. Probably should have. All right, you guys should know this one pretty good by now. This is the drop in for a little mule, which is also trail 46, I want to say, something like that. <laughs> Every time, crap all over the floor. Yep. Okay, we're gonna test out those welds that I just did right here. I hope it doesn't break off down in here because it's uphill both ways. There you go. And eating out right over there there's no rocks over there anymore so is the top way up there it's nasty out here so this is the uh, like buggy line that I did in the cheap Jeep challenge I still don't know how I made it up there. I couldn't even get up there in the Scorpion with the rear steer last time I was out here. But today it's super wet. Huh? I think he's saying he's not going to try that. Hit it with your purse! There we go. Now this is going to be tough right here. Up against that tree. There you go. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. There you go. Now go. Four wheel drive. Woo! That was fun. Your turn. You could always do the, the buggy line over there because there's not a lot of mud on there just yet. <laughs> and how will my weak axles ever hold up? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Which is probably true, actually. 
Definitely true, definitely. <laughs> I've walked it five times now. All right, let's see which line Justin's gonna take here. All right, he's coming at it at a different angle here, different approach, trying to avoid that crack, but if you mess up, it's a lot worse. Trying to take uh, the same way Josh attempted at first here. There you go. Yeah. Used to be just a dirt road right up through here. Yeah, it did. Just take your Toyota Camry up it. Cattle cross. Yeah. I mean, that was the only obstacle, and then this was just yeah. the, the dirt road exit. Okay, a couple guys are out. We're gonna go do a school bus. Josh is uh, taking a weird line here through the mud hole. All right, that's us. I guess uh, everybody else is ditching. We're just gonna do one more trail. You know how that goes, so wish us luck here. Josh said he crawled right up this before. Without slipping a tire. Let's see what you got today. It was dry that day. <laughs> Look at that. What? I'll say that's impressive. Look at that! Way to go! So you guys remember this spot, right? So this is where the first time I ever wheeled with Colt, first time I met him, we came out to this trail, a little school bus. I broke, I blew my motor up there, and then he was pulling me back down the hill, and he flipped me over right here, upside down. If you haven't seen that video, it's a good one. You should go check it out. Used to be you'd have to go over this rock right here. Now oh, there's a bypass left and right. But look how big that thing is. <laughs> and what you can't tell on camera is it's really steep right here. And it's muddy today. He's going straight for the hard line. You'd have to have a thousand horsepower to even attempt that. So what's he gonna do? He's gonna attempt it again. Rock! I don't know where he thinks he's going. Go over there. blew my motor up. Oh! You didn't need that, did you? Guess what? We have a Freedom Winch line now. All right, we got him hooked to a tree over there, winching over there. Oh, that sounds terrible. I don't think we should even be up in here. But Josh thinks uh, once he gets past there, he'll be fine. But I really doubt it. <laughs> 
guys can't tell you how much the freedom winch line comes in handy all the winch pulls we've done today we've had to ask for uh, tree savers and soft shackles this thing it's all right there right in the winch no accessories required go check on Tim this is a mess now we're gonna have two Jeeps in this mess there's a rock there, there you go. look at this he's got his accessories handy You think you can do that? Such an awesome rig. I just, just a TJ. Bought a TJ. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> you went right up through there. Well, that was a hoot. So now we just have some normal rocks for a little while and then the end of this trail. It's really crazy. I bet you the bypass is pretty crazy too in the mud. This rock right here used to get everybody's doors before the trail got widened. Okay, this is the exit of this trail, or there's the bypass. This is really gnarly. Good luck. So the line is to get way over there and then crawl up that with your driver tire. But it's so wet, I don't know that you'll be able to do that. So wet, it's not going to happen. If you're ever out in the woods, don't touch that stuff. That's poison ivy. And a lot of people don't know this, but it is a vine and it'll grow up the tree. So here's the tree, here's the poison ivy vine, and it's growing up and all those leaves up in there, or a lot of them are poison ivy leaves. So if you do get this stuff on you, it's okay as long as you wash your hands within 15 minutes. Like you can touch the leaf like that. What it is is the oils. Well, I can because I'm, I'm not allergic to it, but you probably wouldn't want to if you were really allergic to it. But what it really is, is the oils inside the leaves and inside of this that get on your skin. And that's what makes it really bad, is those oily substances. So if you break the leaf or you break the, the stem and get that 
oil on you, that's what's going to get you. Let's take a look at the damage here now that we're off the trail. That thing, I guess that, uh, you say that brace held up there, it didn't push that in, so that's good. Where else did you get damage? You got a little damage right here on the door. A little right here on the door. Oh man. It's time to just take those doors off and say the heck with them. That got a little love on a rock right there, but didn't do any damage there. You got the door right here. Yep. Cracked the, the paint. A little bit right there. I did see this was, oh, this was touching whenever you were on the, the school bus rock. Your, your door looks like it's out of whack again. You see that? Oh yeah, it definitely is out of whack. <laughs> I can almost get my finger in there. Let's see if it still opens. Oh yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> Alright guys, that's a wrap for this video. I hope you liked that. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. That really helps us out with this crazy thing called the algorithm. Leave a comment below and I'll pick a winner in two weeks to give you a free hat. Huge thanks to our Patreons. We couldn't do this without you guys. If you would like to become a Patreon, make sure to check that out at patreon.com slash bleepinjeep or I'll leave a link down below in the description. Our Patreons get early access to these videos. We go on uh, Patreon-only fan rides every once in a while. And you get your name right over, the, is it this side, this side? Either way. <laughs> yes! <laughs> All right, couldn't do it without you guys. Thanks so much, we'll see you in the next video. We just lost power going down the hill, what happened? I don't know. Did you just stall it? <laughs>